Welcome to Stitchery Stories, where textile artists share their life in fabric and thread. Inspiration, techniques, disasters and delights. And I'm Susan Reeks, enthusiastic embroiderer and textile arts dabbler who also loves podcasting. So take a break and enjoy our light-hearted chat and please share with your friends so they can enjoy it too. Hello and welcome today to our lovely guest, Letitia Gibier. Hi, Letitia. Hi, Sue. It's lovely to speak to you today. I hope I haven't mispronounced your name too badly. <laughs> Just saying I did live in France for a while, but uh, I always spoke French with a, a Yorkshire accent, so it was never very good. So Letitia Gibier is French, having made the UK her home. She is a textile artist and an embroidery tutor specialising in hand embroidery. Stump work, gold work and silk shading are her go-to techniques. Letitia is obsessed with techniques and design in general. She has two city and gills in stump work and is currently studying the Certificate for Technical Hand Embroidery at the Royal School of Needlework in Japanese embroidery and Russian gold work. Oh, that sounds very fancy. And she won the Constance Howard and Beryl Dean Award in the Embroiderers Guild Members Challenge for 2017. And that was her lava piece, if anybody remembers that. She put stump work on the map by appearing in Kirsty's Handmade Christmas on Channel 4 in December 2018. And her Sugar School project is the current front cover project of the edition of Stitch Magazine. And she's recently been appointed trustee in charge of design for the Embroiderers Guild. Wow, there, what a list of lovely things, Letitia. Yeah, all very much uh, kicked off recently. So, um, yeah, I'm very excited by all of this. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll tell you what, though, it, it is exciting when everything all kicks off. I'm going to give myself a gold star because I've remembered the links. So the best place to find out about uh, Letitia is on her website, which is corrylittleshop.co.uk. You can find her on Facebook, again, Corrie's Little Shop. And on Instagram at Cory77. So those links will be on Letitia's episode on stitcherystories.com. And uh, we've also got a, an email address as well, a good place for to keep in touch with her would be info at corrylittleshop.co.uk. Yay, I've remembered the links. <laughs> and my voice is kind of packing in, as you can all tell. So I don't know what's happened that. So it's, it's only been doing it the last 10 minutes. Never mind, we'll, we'll carry on. So welcome again, Letitia. So before we get started with the detail of your stitchery story today, would you like to share with us what you're working on and what's got you excited? Well, it's always a bit difficult because first, my head is always full of project. It never (laughs) stops. From the moment I get up in the morning to the moment I I go to bed at night, it's just going on constantly. Um, And my business is kind of split in two. So there's a side where I sell kits and I create kits and I sell supplies. And there's, there's another side where I'm very much a textile artist. I create my own work that I sell at art fairs and in galleries. Mm -hmm. So all my work is always that there's always that uh, split um, and I always work on two projects at a time. And so at the moment on the textile artist side, I'm very, very excited about Mm -hmm. creating stitch jewelry. So I've been making brooches for a while and then about a year ago, I started making pendants and then recently I started creating earrings. So I'm Mm -hmm. going smaller and smaller and smaller. They've been very well received so far, and I just can't stop catch, sketching new ideas. I'm stitching one pair, and then something pops up in my head, and I can quickly draw another sketch for the next one. <laughs> it is very, it's getting very addictive. And on the kid side of things, um, well, following my appearance on Kirsty's Handmade Christmas, I've started creating a series of kits based on the birds of Britain. So the first one based on the piece I did on the on the show uh, was a robin and that was released uh, in January. And the next one I'm working on is a blue tit. So and there will be again, I'm collecting images of bird at the moment and then and then starting designing all of them as I go, basically. One of the images that I've got uh, to share for Letitia is the the robin. It's really cute. It's lovely, actually. Yeah, ni- a nice way to start a series, I think, with a cheerful robin. Yeah. 
<laughs> Brilliant. Well, that's quite a long list of things to be excited about, isn't it? I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> and the the sugar skull that's on the cover of Stitch magazine and the project in there. Now, that's quite an unusual design as well. And there's there's a lot of different techniques that you've that you've included in that as well, I noticed. Yes. So when I um was in touch with Stitch magazine to uh discuss potential tutorial, I kind of wanted to push the boat out a bit. I I noticed being studying at the Royal School of Needlework, discussing with my fellow students mm. that um there is kind of projects in magazines and kits, etc., are sometimes a little bit too simple. Uh, because we want obviously, I mean, my own kits are like that. Mm. We want to appeal to a lot to the larger public, yes. not necessarily to the experts. We just assume the experts will design for themselves. It's not always the case. And having something that goes that extra mile, that push a little bit more, mm. uh, was something I was really looking forward to. And I've been created pieces in my own work inspired by tattoos quite a lot. Yeah. And the sugar skull had been on my list forever. <laughs> and I never got round to it. And discussing with Stitch Magazine's editor team, editing team, um, when they said to me that one of the theme was the human form, I submitted the project. And I wasn't expecting them to pick it up because, as you said, it's very unusual for the mm. world of hand embroidery. Um, and they did. And so I was given leeway to run with it, which uh, which I try to, even for me, stitching it, it pushed my own boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> so, so from that point of view, I was like, okay, that might work then. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Now, that's really interesting. And I had a good chat with Natalie Dupuis a couple of weeks ago about about kits and how helpful they are in helping us to try something um, in, a, in a guided way that we maybe wouldn't have tried. And so I think, the, yes, it's interesting that you've po- pointed out there that it is true. A lot of kits are aimed at a beginner level. Having one that is going to push somebody and it helps you learn more, doesn't it? So I think that's a really, really good idea that there's mileage in kits for everybody. It doesn't matter what your level of expertise is. There's always something that you could learn new, isn't there? And give something a try. Well, exactly. And having, I mean, if you want to give it a go, having everything in a box that you just open Mm. and you can start makes it so simple rather than, like I've been wanted to give a go to lace making, for example, but you've got to go and buy a pillow and a hundred bobbins, etc. It's it's getting a bit much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but just... where where a kit, you open it and you have a go. It's not for you. You haven't spent hundreds in equipment that you'll never use again. Yeah, so exactly. From that point of view, kits are very useful. I think. Well, so that's a really lovely list of exciting things, anyway. So, and I'm sure we'll come back to some of those other points while we go on. Now, I must ask you, when I was reading out your links there, your website is called Corrie Little Shop. And then and I originally thought, why, why is it called that? So have you got, have you got a story there, aren't you, Letitia, as to why your website is named something quite unusual? Yes. Well, basically, it comes from the fact that my nickname is Corrie. Uh, in the, like, 15 years ago, when I started being on forums, on internet forums, and sector discussing embroidery with other people, mm. it was my name on the internet, you know, at the time, oh, right. I yeah, had sort of a real name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's a nickname my dad gave me when I was at university because I just picked up stitching and I got problems sleeping. So I would stay up most of the night stitching. And my parents would found entire pieces of work on the table in the morning that they had no idea I was working on. <laughs> um, and uh, and my dad, being very much interested in all the Celtic culture, mm. um, started calling me Corrigan. And a Corrigan is a little Celtic demon that um, is a like house demon. Uh, one of the family member is a little demon that spends all then all its night stitching. And doing things like stitching socks to trousers and things like that. <laughs> so my dad thought it was very appropriate to give me that name. And it kind of stuck. <laughs> I've got friends of mine 20 years later that still call me Corey because yeah. that's the way they met me on the internet. So, <laughs> so I do answer to both Leticia and Corey 
quite <laughs> happily without even thinking now. So that's where the Curry's Little Shop came. When I started the business, I didn't have any idea of where it would go. So the brand started and then now, six years later, it's kind of there to stay. So, <laughs> so I can't really change it now. <laughs> yeah. And, and the thing is, that that's quite a good idea sometimes. I mean, you know, people will often say, well, call it your name. Yours is quite a unique name. Me, I, I can't have SusanWeeks.com because there's like a, a, an MP and a doctor and, and some Egyptologist who's died and all sorts of things. So it's just like there's too many people. So I don't bother. Um, so I, I come up with a, like a brand for my different ventures online. So mm-hmm. it can be quite a good way to start without committing to a specific thing. It was, yeah. And also my my name is difficult enough for French people to pronounce. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I thought, oh, if I want to go worldwide, that's going to be impossible to just <laughs> Nobody's going to be able to say it, let alone spell it. So um, curry was, I thought, was quite easy and easy to remember and to spell. So that's also why it stuck. Yeah. Well, hats off to your dad for coming up with such an excellent name. Yeah. <laughs> he created the logo as well. So <laughs> oh, brilliant. Yeah, it's like a little little character, isn't it? So Yeah. <laughs> so um now you're saying there you'd be up busily stitching or through the night, etc. But what got you interested in embroidery and textile art, Letitia? And and who taught you and what did you do? Well, it it started um it started at uni and that's why I was so obsessed at the time by, mm-hmm. by, and spend all night stitching. I was coming to the UK for the first, for, not for the first time, but for my first long stay um, to finish my last university degree. And I could not take a television with me because I was going to travel back and forth in like in buses yeah. for 24 hours. So yeah. a television with me wasn't a, an option. So, and I've always been very, very hyperactive. So for me, I needed something to kind of calm myself down. I'd always done a little bit of canvas the canvas work as a kid and a little bit of knitting taught by my grandmother. But my stepmom, just the summer just before I left, inherited from her grandmother a box of printed linen tablecloth. Oh, yes. The typical French that you see on all the the uh, car boot sale in France yeah. Yeah, yes. <laughs> and none of them had been actually stitched so yeah. as I was rummaging for that box I said to her oh do you know this have you been taught this and uh, she said no I haven't but two of my older sisters have so if you want they can teach you Lovely. so off I went to my steps mom's sister <laughs> uh, saying to her right I want to learn this before I'm leaving for England in a week <laughs> 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 and um and I spent a good weekend sat with her on the sofa, learning everything about there that she could teach me in a weekend about traditional French embroidery. And um, and then I left for England. Part of my luggage had a bunch of tablecloth and some <laughs> cotton threads and some needles, and that was it. And then I arrived in the UK, and I thought, "Ooh, there's an abadashri in the in the in the way." Well, it wasn't the village; it was Bath, so it was a town. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go and have a look at this, and I discovered cross stitch, <laughs> and again kits. Yeah, brilliant. and that was it. I was hooked. It was hours on end spent like if I wasn't studying I would be stitching I literally as a student I was not the typical student that would get drunk on a Friday night I would be I couldn't wait for the end of my courses to just go home and stitch with a cup of tea (laughs) so at university I was already old as you (laughs) may think of the traditional image of people (laughs) stitching (laughs) <laughs> well you see I, I I did have some I had two pieces on the girl that were from you know the transfers from the good needlework woman's magazine from about 1933 that I'd, I'd finally finished and so I, I used to do those but pretend like in secret you know because it wasn't kind of cool was it to be sat a doing embroidery and b such an old-fashioned picture and you know, it was like a house and a cottage and roses and <laughs> one of those oh it's lovely and they're still in my lounge now these two I love them and everybody always says oh aren't they nice oh thank you 
But um, obviously, when you're a student, that's just not cool at all. So I was out there getting drunk and messing around and not doing any embroidery. So it was ages before I picked it up. Oh, I did it in secret. So hats off to you for um, persevering and getting on with it. Yeah, and <laughs> cross, cross stitch is a good place to start. We've you know said that with other guests as well. Again, it's you've you've got kits, you've got a, a thing, and do you know. I, th- I think they can be quite challenging as well. Somebody gave me oh, a yeah. kit. Oh, crikey. In fact, I don't think I even did it. It was really, really fine and quite complicated. And and to be honest, I think I was a bit lazy and I couldn't be bothered to do all the counting and things. You know, if it, if it was printed out, that was all right. But the counted ones, oh, no, I, I, I was just too lazy to do that, I think. But uh, yeah, the, the, there's some nice designs. And even now when we're at Knitting Stitching Show, there's still loads and loads of stands, isn't there, selling cross stitch kits? So it's ever, ever popular. Every now and again, I just look at, the, at those kits and I'm like, ooh, I could do that again. <laughs> and then I'm kind of I'm thinking, I mean, I, I've started one recently and <laughs> just to have a bit of a break and not having to think <laughs> about my own design and just go through the motion. Yeah. And in, in those days, I would I ended up testing patterns for designers and, and like not only cross stitch, but pull threads as well. So things oh, very, nice. very complex. Yeah. Stitch a meter square of cross stitch in, in about three months. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when I picked up that kit the other day, I was like, how did I do this? <laughs> I can't do this anymore. <laughs> it's actually very hard. <laughs> oh, dear. So what made you then decide to, you know, taking it from, a hobby what made you decide to run a business around it Leticia? Uh, so when I came back to the UK for good this time about 12 13 years ago I discovered the Ambridges Guild and realized there was a whole world of yeah. textile I didn't know about and that became that triggered even more of an obsession than I had already <laughs> and then one morning I'm sitting here watching Country File on television <laughs> obviously I just moved to the country I wanted to know a little bit about the culture and stuff so Country File is a good start when you when you've just landed here <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant yeah and um, and there was a video diary by Alison Holt, um, the machine embroiderer from Wales that does those pictures that really looks like photography. Yes. I was like, ooh, that's interesting. So I looked her up and then discovered Miss Andan Abbey. Uh, so Miss Andan Abbey at the time was an adult learning college uh, yes. just in Brett Missenden. So it was not far from me living in Maidenhead. And from there that morning, I spent the entire day looking at Great Missenden uh, and Missenden Abbey at their tutors list and who mm. they were and what did I want to do. And I discovered stump work with Kay right. Dennis, gold work with Hazel Everett, ended up booking 13 classes that year. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I went like, yeah, I was living the embroidery life that there was no other, no no space for anything else in my life. Star client there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I that led to two city and guild with Kay as my tutor, but it's actually Azel Everett that pushed me to start designing my own stuff. Right. And um so I started designing what I wanted to do, but at the time it was still just a hobby. And then about six years ago, I, uh, my best friend asked me to be a maid of honor for a wedding, but it had a catch. I also needed to create the, all the decorations <laughs> for her wedding, which I quite enjoy doing, to be honest. And we prepared everything in six months. Uh, we got very, very creative. Um, and all our, all our wedding was handmade in the end. And... And from there, I kind of realized there might be a market for this. <laughs> and also she took into, she was used to doing things because she knew I couldn't stop creating things. But yeah. for me, it's about the process of creating, not necessarily the finished product. So a lot of it was unmounted in boxes and things like that. So she usually was doing things like giving me a phone call going, I've got a birthday party tonight. Can I come and check what's in your box? <laughs> And then she started buying things for me for presents for others. And then at that point, I thought, mm, maybe that's a way for me to carry on creating whilst not filling up the house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's yeah. how I, f- I fell into it, really. It was, it, it, yeah, that's how I started. And then I realized there was a, uh, there was a need out, out there for embroidery tutors, especially in those traditional hand embroidery techniques. Mm. Yeah, and, definitely. 
yeah and then, and then that's like my first class got booked and I did several demonstrations for the Ambrosius Guild and it all started growing from there and yeah it hasn't stopped since. That's great I mean the piece that you won the uh, members challenge with in 2017 was just absolutely fabulous with this lava so it's all black and it's all when you, when you look at it there's beading and all sorts going on in there and then in the middle is this like bright fiery piece of lava sticking out of the rock it's brilliant. Now, you said when I was just kind of introduced you that a lot's happened fairly quickly. Is there any kind of trigger point or something that you can say, yeah, that was the start of this flourish of activities? Is there anything like that? There actually was. Uh, there was a late night discussion on Facebook with Georgina Bellamy. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and Georgina had just been published in Stitch magazine and we were chatting and I said to her, oh, I, one day when I grow up, I'll be published in Stitch magazine as well. And then Georgina started pushing me saying, why don't you email them? Email them with projects. You never know. I'm sure they'll be happy to have you. And by the way, email inspiration in Australia as well. And I'm like, mm, I'm not ready for that. <laughs> Two hours later, I'm lying in bed and I can't sleep. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm quite my brain is going like okay maybe I could do this and maybe I could send that to them and and it's all going on and then as I'm looking through Facebook um, I see um, raise the roof productions post about looking for applicants for Kirsty's and make Christmas right and that they have a new category called needlecraft mm. and so I looked at it and I go okay Actually, I could fit in that category. Uh, maybe I need to send them an email. <laughs> <laughs> so literally, it went from that discussion with Georgina to me going, what do I risk? That they're going to say no to me? I'll move on, do something else. So I send them an email, not expecting anything from it. And then as I had the courage to do that, I finally fell asleep. And the next morning, I'm sitting in front of my laptop at home for my day job. And I'm thinking you know, maybe Georgina was right. Maybe I should risk it. Mm. So not only I started emailing Stitch magazine, but I started emailing the BBC that was looking for crafters as well. Yeah, And and it all started to snowball that way. And then a few weeks later, I got the first phone call from Raise the Roof Production saying, what, were you interested? Uh and what was your project and how can you do this on set in six hours? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then two days later, I get the phone call from Stitch Magazine when they say to me, right, we won your sugar skull. Can you get it to us in, <laughs> in six weeks? Yeah. <laughs> there, all those emails that kind of went as a, oh, why not? I yeah. might as well try. I, I was m very much of the opinion that if I was on Instagram, if I was on Facebook, people would come and find me. And it doesn't work like that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you have to put yourself out there. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. And do you know what? It's so, so brilliant for you to have gone through that story, Letitia, because you know, as, as I say, you'll never meet anybody sitting on your settee in the lounge. You have to go and put yourself out there either physically or, you know, through online or both. And, uh, you know, I spoke to a number of guests uh, who have really kind of taken the bull by the horns and said, right, I'm, I'm going for it. I'm going mm -hmm. to try. And, you know, that's how I get a lot of guests. People email me saying, well, I'm being really brave. And, you know, I wondered if you'd have me on as a guest. Yes, of course I will. You know, and it's, it's it, everybody always says the same thing. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm really scared and I don't know if you'll have me, but, you know, please can I be a guest? Or, but it, you do, you have to put yourself out there. And it doesn't matter whether what you're selling is embroidery, kits, online services like me, whatever it is, you've, you've got to go out and do it. It's like me launching this podcast. There's other reasons behind me doing it other than I like chatting with people about embroidery and textile art. You know, this is my professional portfolio. You know, I had those said, oh, no, who am I to start a podcast? Yeah, but if I hadn't have done it, look at all the things that we wouldn't have talked about. So, yeah, you've got to push yourself and go for it. And it's, it's damn hard. Nobody ever said it was easy, but well done you for doing it. And look what's happened because of it. Well done. It's exactly that. And for me, risking that no 
was almost like, oh, it's people are not going to like my work then. So why am I going to carry on doing it then? And then actually having all those yeses back to back changed the way I see things because because it meant that I was courageous enough, for example, when the Ambrosius Guild mm. said we need a trustee in charge of design to actually contact them and say, what exactly does a trustee do? I'm not saying I'm interested. I'm just asking. Yeah. Yeah, and then before I knew it, I was appointed trustee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's one of those things of, yeah, having the courage to get out there is the hardest thing in the world because you you may have that no. I had a no last night, for example, mm-hmm. and and it's 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 difficult to take. And when it's our creative work, if it was my day job, I wouldn't care. <laughs> <laughs> but when it's your creative work, it's part mm-hmm. of you. So it's it makes it very difficult. Yes, it, it feels very personal, doesn't it? And and that's yes. what you know we're all told: don't take the rejections personally. But it's really difficult because we've got so much emotion tied up and so much mm-hmm. passion and time all tied up in what we're doing. So it's easier said than done. But yeah, and I mean that's the, that's the thing, isn't it? If you don't ask, you've already got a no. So what are you going to do? To you know, we've all got a pile of no's without doing anything. Do nothing is a no because you haven't even asked. Exactly. Yeah, so, no, that's really good. And and it was I was actually interested to read about uh, being appointed as the tr- trustee for design for the Embroider Skill. And I'm actually on the Embroider Skill Regional Committee as well for the Yorkshire and Humber region. So you know I, I'll waffle on about the Embroider Skill forever. But um, mm-hmm. that was interesting because I think it's nice to have a good mixture of of people and getting people involved. And as much as people will sit in the background and kind of moan on, unless you're going to you know, you get out of things what you put in, don't you? So I think putting yourself out there and putting in and contributing is is always a good thing in my eyes, especially when we're in a, you know, an online world and we need to showcase our skills, don't we? And if we don't do it for ourselves, nobody else is going to. Yeah, exactly. And for me, being part of an organisation like the Embroders Guild, I'm going to be part of it and be part of the change. Exactly. And that's how, after not even two meetings in my local branch, I I volunteered for the committee. And then a few years later, I went on to the regional committee. And then I've been thinking about becoming a trustee for a while. But so far, there wasn't anything I was comfortable in taking on. Yes. Until that one about design came up. And, and at that point, I went, ooh, hold on a second. That is something yeah. I can do. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and then when I contacted uh, the, the CEO and the chair of the board about it, 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 was, it was obvious that, first, I'm a project manager by trade. So being a trustee or project manager is very, very similar Yes. in terms of job description. So it wasn't anything new for me from that point of view. And yes, it was a good balance. I mean, yes, I'm sitting next to Anthea Godfrey and people like that that are very much textile art work orientated. And and so I think having somebody that's got my background in hand embroidery is a good balance as well. Yes. Um, so that's also why I was very happy to go forward with it. Now, you've come up there with, um, I suppose, those are, are all highlights that have happened relatively quickly. Is there anything else in there that you would consider as being a highlight of your journey so far in textile art and embroidery Leticia? Well we talked about the embroiderers challenge in 2017 yeah. and I honestly I submitted that piece because for me doing competition all my creative time is very much time to the minute because I've got to create things for the business things I've got to work first time around because I don't necessarily have the time mm-hmm. to fail at anything and uh, and to redo samples and things so my creative time is that members challenge competition. It's the time where I can go all out. I'm not going to time the piece to know how much I need to sell it for. <laughs> and I can really go crazy. And, <laughs> and I had some success in 2016 as I won a commendation and a second prize. Yeah. But I thought, you know what, let's do it again. That was fun. And I never expected the result I got when I got the phone call and I literally I was at work when I got the phone call and my answer was what <laughs> <laughs> and I made her repeat it three times 
sure. <laughs> I just never thought about winning it. And that for me was literally, I was going around the office doing a little victory dance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised. Yeah, because to, to have the two awards as well, not just one. Yeah. <laughs> and that was for me, it was like, it, it was amazing. That was the best feeling in the world. So yeah, it was it was very much a very high point for me. Yes, I'm I'm not surprised. I, I mean, I dutifully enter as well. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I enter because I think if they're going to run competitions, people need to enter, and so we need some people to enter. So I enter to make up the numbers and and enter. But I yeah. do it for the other reason that it gives me a deadline and makes me do something. Because otherwise. I spend more time talking about embroidery than actually doing anything. So, you know, for me, it's like I've got certain milestones in the year, like regional day and uh, members challenge and all the rest of it. So I've got, I've, I've done my home entry as well. I, I, I know what I'm going to do, but I haven't started it yet. Cause it's, it's on the list of other yeah, things, other things to do before that. So that, that'll be the usual last minute panic. Yeah, my home entry will is still maturing in my head. It's actually <laughs> a very difficult theme for me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, I got an idea popped in my head straight away and I thought, right, that's it. I'm doing that. So I know what I'm doing. I just haven't planned it out yet. Right then. Um, I'm just thinking. Right. So we've we've moved from highlights then. So have you got anything for us, Letitia, when something didn't go quite as planned and was possibly even a disaster? And importantly, what did you learn from that experience? Well, there was. There was. And it was. it's linked to another competition, actually. <laughs> Well, after after that that first success in 2016 at the Members Challenge, then I thought, you know what? Next year, not only am I entering the Members Challenge, but I'm going to enter the Madeira competition as well. <laughs> because the theme is glimpses of the Roaring Twenties. That's Art Deco. I love Art Deco. Just come on, I've got to do a piece. <laughs> And then I looked at the detail of the brief and it says 30 centimeters minimum mm-hmm. for hand embroidery after having a bit of a stroke and going, they're joking, right? They've got no idea what hand embroidery is, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I sat and designed a very geometric piece, very inspired by the architecture of the time. It was all going to be gold work, uh, meters of twist and leather, plique and 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 pearl pearl and I stretched my fabric on no I actually traced it first stretch my fabric on the slate frame and work for about a hundred hours on it <laughs> I'm not joking it was most of my January three weeks every awake hours because if I was going to create two pieces one for the end of January and one for the end of February yeah. I needed to get on with it yeah and then one day I'm walking back in the room and I hadn't covered the frame. So I'm walking, I'm walking from a distance towards it. And I realized that in my rush of setting this up, I had made one big mistake was to trace a geometric pattern and then tr- stretch it. <sighs> the entire thing was all wrong. The circles were not circles anymore. The straight oh. lines were not straight lines. <laughs> It was literally horrible. Oh, I had spent a hundred hours oh. on a piece of work that I couldn't retrieve. There was no way yeah. I could make it as good as I, I wanted it to be. So that frame, I opened the, gar- the back door. That frame flew in the garden. <laughs> I said, oh, what I do, I'm very patient. I am not. <laughs> so the slate frame got thrown in the garden in the middle of January. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? I'll look at it tomorrow. Um, oh, after, oh, oh, no. after it spent the night in the garden when it rained all night <laughs> I thought well that's it then there's not much I can do about that piece anymore oh dear now you see I thought you were going to say and then I cut it up and I, I did some machine embroidery on it and melted it and it was uh, fabulous it just you, know, you threw it away oh no uh, and I learned one thing. Uh, <laughs> there's one reason you stretch your fabric first and then trace it afterwards. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's to avoid that sort of problem. So yeah. I learned this the hard way. Oh. But I ended up having some spare time for the volcano piece. So <laughs> and, l- and look what happened with that in the end. So that was fantastic then, wasn't it? But exactly. oh dear, what a disaster. Well, I think that's going to be one of the best disasters we've had, really. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in the end, I did enter the Madeira competition the following year, 
with a Darth Vader's mask because then the theme was glimpses of the movies. I yeah. didn't win, but the piece is still on show. I think it's going to be in Glasgow, in the Glasgow show over the weekend. So um, I did end up entering the Madeira competition just a year later. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. And that, you know, that's the other good thing about these exhibitions, uh, about these competitions, is that then your work gets exhibited all over the place. I mean, I, I mean you did a page, uh, your, your Jabberwocky was fabulous for page 17. I, I entered one as well. It only came back a couple of weeks ago. And it's, and exactly. I, and it, yeah, it's brilliant. I love it. Because for me, I would never, ever get anything exhibited. So to take part in something as, and which then gets part of an exhibition, it's, it's wonderful. I, I absolutely love it. You know, I don't know why more people don't enter them, but anyway. <laughs> now, now I don't suppose, Letitia, since you are so obsessed with your embroidery, do you have any of those dreadful UFOs lurking about in the back of a cupboard somewhere? I've got quite a pile of them, but <laughs> there's one that has been going on for at least probably 20 years now. Oh, crikey. Um, it's a cross-stitch kit that it was the last kit I bought before I left uh, the University of Bath to come home. And uh, it's by Teresa Wensler called English Garden. And it's like a garden scene with a very ornate border around it and two peacocks. Nice. I bought it because of the amount of thread there was in that kit. <laughs> <laughs> it was about 80 colors of the MC because like with all Teresa Wensler's kit, you mix two colors together. Oh. So it was over 160 needles you have to have prepared and everything. Wow. But Despite all my years stitching cross stitch, and I should know that, I took the decision rather than starting in the middle and going outwards oh. to actually stitch the border first. And I ended up with a difference of about four stitches. Oh no. And yeah, and at that point, I kind of thought, you know what, I'm going to have to start this over. Um, but it, then life took over. Yeah. And- and, and it, it's still in the it's still in the box somewhere, and it's still there. Me thinking every now and again, I I looked at it and I go, oh, maybe I should start it over. <laughs> but I, I'm not sure it's going to happen. <laughs> right, so you've you, you've um, shared two absolutely classic things there: stretch your fabric and then put your design on, and <laughs> don't do it, and start your cross stitch in the middle. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> two two big tips. <laughs> oh, fantastic. So with all that excitement going on in the last year or so, um, have you got any future plans and projects that you can share with us today as we wrap up? Well, I've got, apart from participating in several gallery show, Bucks Art Weeks in a few months, etc., that I'm preparing for, there's one big project I'm very excited about. It's I've partnered with friends of mine that who have got a company designing T-shirts. All right, yeah. And it's going to be a very unusual partnership, but basically they have already about like 3,000 design online um, and things like a bit sarcastic. Yeah. And that is my type of sense of humor. <laughs> um, and uh, so they've given me free reign to access all their designs and create kits and embroidery from their design. And I've given them access to all my designs <laughs> and they're going to create T-shirts from my designs. So that collaboration is just at the beginning. But mm. um, we've created a line of kind of craft related sarcastic T-shirts, um, things that says I practice stitchcraft or um, I stitch because stabbing is illegal, for yeah. example. <laughs> this sounds absolutely fascinating. And that is a very much a new venture. So I hope that's going to kick up and that uh, I should have a, a new selection of kit by the end of the year that are a little bit out there. It, it requires a certain level of what we call in French black humor. Yes. <laughs> yes. And these guys are called T-shirt by E2. And I can send you a link for that yes. as well. Yes, um, please. We'll get that in because that all sounds absolutely fascinating. Yeah, really good. Well, Letitia, that's been absolutely brilliant. As ever, we could have sat and talked here all afternoon. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for sharing your stitchery story with us today. It's been really, really fascinating. And I'm sure everybody's going to be really, really interested in what you've been doing and what's coming up next. So remember to follow Letitia on her website facebook and instagram and uh, yeah that's going to be really really interesting seeing what you come up with next so there we are thank you so much Letitia. it's been wonderful speaking to you thank you sue it's been great if you like this episode and want to hear more then please join the stitch me stories fan club 
so you can get an email when a new episode is released. It's a quick and easy way of listening and of keeping up with any news and offers from our lovely guests. Please visit stitcherystories.com to join the fan club. Of course, if you have iTunes, then subscribe there to automatically get new episodes. And why not leave us a review and rating whilst you are there? So that is the end of our Stitchery story for today. So keep stitching, keep smiling, and keep creating your very own Stitchery stories. <laughs>